Good afternoon, my name is John Keegan. Uh, I have the pleasure of batting clean up here. Uh, Vice President with Gilbane Development Company. Uh, Gilbane Development Company is the real estate development arm of the Gilbane organization, a 138 year old fifth generation family owned uh, real estate development and construction management organization. I head Gilbane's public private partnership initiatives. I also chair the Real Estate Institute of the National Council on Public Private Partnerships. Today I want to speak about the practical application of P3s. Why, is the, why the increased interest in public-private partnerships? Well, if anything, the obstacles and constraints related to dot time, cost, and expertise have only become more acute. But as I go across the country working and speaking in this fashion, I find that people are more interested in and more focused on uh, uh, what was previously insurmountable is now surmountable, and minds are opening to considering what's possible. What is a public-private partnership? A definition that I, or a phrase that I find uh, particularly ca captivating is, if you've seen one public-private partnership, you've seen one public-private partnership. It's a contractual agreement between the public and private sectors where each brings their best skills to bear. It's not what public-private partnerships are not. They're not a panacea. They're not a means of getting something for nothing. They're simply another tool in the toolbox. What makes P3 successful? A robust statutory and political environment. A revenue stream or some form of in-kind compensation or in-kind compensation as at the essence of the business deal and the stakeholder support. Enabling legislation for P3s varies widely across the nation. In Maryland, we see increasing interest in P3s and the application of them. In Virginia, we've seen for the past 10 years, there have been uh, legislation, enabling legislation for P3s that has been particularly successful. Projects that are best suited for P3s are not just horizontal infrastructure, not just vertical infrastructure, not just real estate, could be service contracts as well. What I'd like to do is focus on some case studies and why in each of these cases the institution sought a P3. Garrett College in, in McHenry, Maryland, why did they seek a P3? A new academic program, outdoor adventure sports, brought students from outside the county, outside the country, limited off-campus residential options, so the need for housing was acute. The college couldn't do it on their own without a P3. At Centenary College, a new president, a surge in enrollment, the need for capital projects that the college hadn't seen in 40 years. Their timing of access to capital wasn't in line with the critical path of the schedule. They needed a P3. At the Rhode Island School of Design, an urban campus, land constrained, urgent need for housing, growing enrollment, lack of capital. What they wanted to do is have long-term control of an asset. They were able to do that with a P3 through an operating lease with a purchase option. Virginia Commonwealth University, again, like RISD, they have growing enrollment, urban campus, land constrained, and like in Maryland, there is limited state funds that can help them meet their needs. So what they look for is a private partner who can deliver the asset for them, in this case through a referral agreement. The, at Eastern State Hospital, Hancock Geriatric Treatment Center in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia, what their need was, a consent order from the, for the, from the Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services that put them at risk of losing significant uh, Medicare and Medicaid dollars a P3 helped them meet that, or that consent order in a most timely fashion. On the same campus, the Adult Mental Health Treatment Center, the need for that was the uh, opportunity to create 400 acres of surplus property on a campus that only a P3 could help them do in the most uh, expeditious fashion. In Virginia, they have civil commitment legislation, uh, legislation for the civil commitment of sexually violent predators that came, it was enacted roughly a decade ago, and with that came a mandate to get a program in place right away. A P3 was the best way for them to achieve that objective. Loudoun County, Virginia, their need for a government center, the reason for a P3, a failed bond referendum, a significant capital investment out of pocket, scattered operations across 17 locations, and the need to consolidate. At the Texas Department of, Consoli uh, Department of Transportation, what's their need for a P3? The need to, pr to preserve precious capital for horizontal infrastructure, their core need, not vertical infrastructure. Best way for them to do that was through a P3. Houston Independent School District, need for a P3 driven by two failed bond referendums, $11 million out of pocket at, by the time of the second failed bond referendum. A P3 helped them get an appropriation lease structure in place, recover that $11 million immediately, and get two 500,000 square foot schools online right away. Manchester, New Hampshire, the need for a P3 was really a political pledge. The mayor's pledge to overhaul the school system by the end of his term, so a flag had been planted. The way to do that in three and a half years was through a P3. So, 
lessons learned. An integrated approach to P3s we find to be most important. Balance your program, your, uh, program objectives with your resource realities. Preserve your dollars, your precious dollars for your core needs. And also recognize that public-private partnerships are not just about money. They involve many other aspects to them. So what the benefits of P3s, what public-private partnerships can be, they can help you realize projects more quickly, less expensively, in a better fashion, and with less risk. But it's important we'd encourage you to get, get educated. There are a lot of resources out there, like the National Council for Public-Private Partnerships, nctriplep.org. Understand when it's the right tool in your toolbox. Understand what skills you can bring, what risks uh, are best uh, shared by which partner and find the right partner to meet your objectives. Thank you very much, everybody.